final uh, discussion or topics. Okay, so I hope we will finish the two PowerPoints for tonight. We have uh, the continuation of the, the infectious diseases for the integumentary system, sense organs, and central nervous system, which is the fungal and parasitic infection. After that, we will uh, move on to the, the viral, bacterial, uh, fungal, and parasitic infection of gastrointestinal tract. Okay. So we will uh, be discussing each of the of the uh, each of the systems um, until the final uh, topics. Okay. So we still have respiratory. Next, after the gastrointestinal tract, will be cardiovascular. This includes, of course, the circulatory, and then we will be having the respiratory, and then the genital um, urinary tract. Okay, so um, I think we need to start. May I double check? We are only 66, but um, I hope others will be joining us um, until we will finish the, the discussion for tonight. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm thinking twice, uh, actually a while ago, kasi kung hindi tayo mag-meet ngayon, um, we will be having a hard time uh, attending or I, I, can, can, I cannot meet you actually at exactly 5 o'clock on Thursday. Yun sarang iniisip ko, we will be having 5 to 8 on Thursday. But I'm, um, I'm thinking of the traffic and I'll be just going out from the university at exactly 5 o'clock. And I will be um, fetching my uh, kids at my mom's house, kaya medyo, ano siya, medyo hindi, hindi posible. So, I hope we will be able to finish uh, the two PowerPoints tonight so that um, we can finish cardiovascular uh, and respiratory on, um, on Thursday. And then, um, next week, after this week, we, I hope we will finish the the other two uh, or one system so that we can have the pre-finals. I think the pre-finals is um, December 15 and 16 or 16 and 17. So I will be just be updating you on the pre-finals. Okay. The pre-finals of... So may I just ask for a few minutes, how is your... Um, your um your ospe last time i did that actually um for my set though others i uh, gave already their um, scores others i i didn't actually have the time to um um to assign it in our teams because of the unexpected um circumstance of my father actually uh naisugod namin ang Sa hospital ang father ko last time so that I, so I I did that uh, actually assign the 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 scores okay so hopefully I will be assigning this uh, this week and um, for those who got uh, twenty and above um, I assume you you will be expecting a very high grades on the midterms but those who got very low those who got four or below ten. I hope you will be making up on the finals, pero uh, if you did not make it on the prelims and midterms, I think you will find difficulty in making up on finals. But uh, there's uh, there's no, um, uh, what do you call this? Nothing is impossible. You can uh, still, okay, if you will uh, really would like to um to get 85 percent on your uh, final grade you need to work and uh, make an effort to study harder okay but uh, if you are just lying on the remedial exam that i will be giving you as a chance to uh, to give okay to get at 85 percent uh passing score may hirapan yata kayo but uh um with uh, God's grace and God's help, you need to also help yourself for those who are still 
um, what we call this, yung mga alanganin. Okay, I just uh, remind you to um, to work on your uh, final um, final uh, requirements, quizzes, and of course your exams and your final OSPE. Okay, so for your I final OSPE, this will be included uh, the the images or the pictures that will be included in the lab, and of course um, part will be the lecture. So it will be 50-50, 50% from the lecture and 50% will be on the uh, laboratory. Okay, so may I just announce uh, to uh, section G, though your uh, laboratory instructor will be announcing it later, um, you will need your um, a popsicle stick next meeting on your lab, uh, a gla one glass slide, if you don't have a glass slide, you can have a plastic uh, a plastic cover or a uh, much uh, thicker plastic you may ma matigas. And then you cut it like a, the size of the glass slide. And then you need uh, a uh, pen and a masking tape for your labels and um, a scotch tape. So you need that five materials for our uh, uh, laboratory activity next meeting, okay? So may I ask everybody, may I ask everyone to open your camera? May I now present to you our uh, next um, discussion in the lecture? Same people, you know, same people in the prelim, same people in the midterms are really uh, working hard to make a very high uh, scores. So I hope for those who are also same people who got very low in the, um, in the prelims and in the midterms, you need to work triple or more than that for you to be able to, uh, to get 85%. Uh, I need to tell this. For you to be reminded of your um, of your grades and of course your responsibility as a student to work and study harder for your 85 passing. There's no problem if you will just be getting 75 percent. Pero hindi kasi eh. You need an 85 percent for your subject because your uh, course is nursing. It's a board course, so you need to have an 85% on your major uh, subjects. Hindi biro po yung, yung, hindi po kayo nakakapasa ng mga quizzes nyo, most especially on your OSPE. There will be a great impact on your grades. Okay? Though I will be giving you a chance, I'll be giving you a remedial uh, exams, but don't rely on the remedial class because if you will not be able to make it on the remedial exam i'm so sorry we i did i think i did my best and my uh, my my teammates or my team teach your uh, laboratory teachers to give you everything we met you uh with uh, with all our uh, supposed lectures and the laboratory we did it uh i think Hindi kami nagkulang ng mga ginawang efforts sa inyo to, um, to be able to, of course, supposed to, to, to get an 85 and above grade. Kasi medyo, medyo ano na tayo, nasa finals na tayo. Kaya medyo dapat si seryoso nyo, dapat na seryoso, sineryoso nyo siya nung prelims and midterms pa. I will uh, assess for those who got very low. I can honestly, honestly say if you will be getting a very high or you will perfect all the quizzes, siguro masasabi ko you will be able to get 85%. I don't have any problems anymore with uh, those students who who get very high scores in the quizzes, in the OSPE, kasi same people po sila in their um i don't have any problem in your requirements because based on the on all on all my rec records all of you already um 
uh, accomplished and completed all your requirements. Ang nagiging problema lang po natin ang mga yung mga nakukuha niyo sa OSPE and then your quizzes and your final um, final exams. So I hope you will will you you will be able to uh, make it on your um, on your uh, final quizzes, final uh, term exam, and of course your OSPE. Okay? Para hindi tayo magkakaproblema. Okay? So, for my uh, BS1F uh, set A, and for those my, for 1G, both uh, sets, please be reminded of the materials that you need to bring on your laboratory. That would be your next uh, laboratory activity. Okay, you will be, of course, uh, be informed with your uh, laboratory instructors. Okay, may I just present to now your uh, the PowerPoint for the continuation of the fungal and the parasitic infection for the integumentary system, sense organs, and the central nervous system. Yung mga iba nga sa inyo na just my assessment, ah, maraming makakakuha ng 90, 90 plus and above grades sa inyo. If others can uh, be able to get very high in the OSME and all the quizzes, bakit hindi nyo kayang uh, uh, ma-attain din yung mga high scores? Kasi pare-pareho lang naman yung mga binibigay ko sa inyong mga notes. You have everything. Actually, other uh, subjects, they don't actually share their PowerPoints. Alam mo yung sinasabi ng ibang mga nakausap namin faculty, they will just um, discuss. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's up to the students to listen and take down notes. And for all those uh, lectures and the laboratories that we give you, we, we give you everything. We actually give you everything, all the PowerPoints, all the videos. Others don't have videos. Kahit tanungin nyo pa yung mga ibang mga sections. They don't have any videos. I don't know if uh, others, uh, other sections who, who we shared all the videos, they also gave their students. But actually, we gave you everything. Lahat ng PowerPoints, doble-doble pa lahat. Nandun pa sa mga recordings. Okay, so I hope um, for this uh, coming final uh, quizzes, all your scores, scores will be uh, above the, the expected, not only for those uh, expected students who, who always got very high, but I will be uh, expecting for those who, who, who got very low in the prelim and the midterms, yun yung imo-monitor namin, okay? Okay, class, can you now view my uh, current slide? Can you now view? Yes. Okay, so we are now on the continuation. So we will be, uh, I will, we will be um, giving, integrating this in the pre-finals, okay, part of the finals. So we have the fungal uh, infections and the parasitic infections of the integumentary system, sense organs, and the... Um, the central nervous system okay so for the fungi how they uh, cause diseases these are the following the tissue damage uh, associated with fungal infections results primarily from direct invasion of tissue although uh, unlike bacteria okay uh, fungi don't actually uh, produce toxins okay so with subsequent displacement and destruction of vital structures coupled with toxic effects of the inflammatory response. Okay? Masses of fungal cells can cause obstruction of bronchi in the lungs and tubules and ureters in uh, kidneys, leading to obstruction of the flow of bodily fluids. Okay? So some fungi can grow in the walls of arteries and veins, so they can block okay? or uh, they can stop the flow of uh, the blood, leading to exclusion. Okay, when you say exclusion, this is the blockage of the blood flow, blood vessel. 
of your cell. And uh, of course, the tissue necrosis means uh, the depth of the tissue itself, resulting from the lack of oxygen. Okay, so there will be a lot of fungal infections. Okay, most especially in our uh, integumentary system. Okay, so these are the classifications of the fungal diseases. Okay, we usually term it mycosis. Can be classified into the following sub uh, four categories. So though we already uh, took some time to discuss this in, uh, the, in the diversity of uh, microorganisms last time in the part of the fungi. Okay, so we actually uh, remember it again. Okay, to uh, refresh our uh, memories or the information or the concept on this last time in the diversity of microorganism. Okay, so there are four categories in the fungal diseases. We have the superficial mycosis. This is the outermost areas of the body. So uh, these are the infections usually occur outside. Say. So these are the outer surfaces of the hair shafts and the epidermis. So it's superficial. So uh, these are the minor fungal uh, diseases or the fungal infection. Okay. Next would be the cutaneous hair and nail mycosis, which also infects the dermis, hair shafts, and the nails. So this is the common tinea or the ringworm infections. Okay. And then we have the subcutaneous mycosis which uh, actually also uh, infects the dermis and the underlying uh, tissues. Okay? So when you say subcutaneous, this is actually um, a major uh, fungal disease or infection compared with the superficial and the cutaneous. And then the systemic is the, actually uh, the generalized okay? uh, uh, major uh, fungal uh, infection. This is the deep-seated mycosis. When you say systemic, again, it has something to do with infection in our uh, internal organs already. So that's why it's a major uh, fungal disease. It can be detrimental and it can be deadly to the uh, to the patient or the individual. Okay. So these are the four categories of the fungal diseases or the infection. Okay. First, we have the superficial mycosis. We have the automycosis. Okay. This, uh, it's, um, uh, it's something in the inner part of the, uh, the inner ear or the skin on the ear. And then we have the tinea versicolor or the piti, uh, pityriasis and uh, we have the tinea uh, nigra. Okay. First, we have the... Um, the automycosis is a fungal infection of the outer ear canal, most often caused by a mold. Okay? And then we have the tinea versicolor or the pityriasis. You can see here. Okay? I think I, can, I did see one, one uh, adult female one time uh, that with the tinea versicolor. It's not only in the part of the face, but of course uh, uh, also part on the on the arm okay that's the the tinea versicolor so parang parang yung natuyong parang na na nabalatan o yung parang burn patient ba but it's not actually uh, caused by a uh, burn but it's uh, caused by a uh, fungi okay it's a this is a tinea versicolor or pityriasis it's actually a ringworm infection that affects the skin of the chest or back and less commonly the arms, thigh, neck, and face caused by uh, mala, malaseya furfur. Okay, so you just take note of the uh, the the fungi or the the pathogen or the microorganism that causes this superficial uh, uh, skin infection. Okay, and then we have the tinea nigra. So it, uh, it looks like this, okay? So it's tinea nigra because when you compare it with the tinea versicolor, it's more likely a bright color, okay, of the tinea than the tinea nigra. So that's why uh, it's called tinea nigra because the, the, the infected part is, uh, uh, the color is uh, more on uh, brownish or uh, it's a black, there's a black, uh, color on the infected part of the body or the skin, okay? It's a ringworm infection of the palms of the hands, neck, and feet caused by Hortia wernicki, okay? 
Okay. So in the laboratory part of this, you will be uh, mastering a lot of uh, the pathogen or the microorganism or the parasites that cause uh, the following uh, the uh, parasitic infection or the or the protozoal or the some would be fungal infection. Okay, so there will be uh, there will be no actually video representation in the lab. There will be more on the the pre lab discussion. There will be powerpoints in the laboratory and there will be procedures done okay and there will be viewing of the the slides and uh, it's already be integrated in the in the powerpoints kasi yun lang usually yung ginagawa na natin though we are um, work, we are thinking of uh, working on the the fecal specimen and the in the blood Okay, blood specimen is where the part where we will uh, conduct um, experiments that we need um, stains and uh, other chemicals and other materials. But the rest would be uh, microscopic, all microscopic. Okay, from experiment, uh, I think... Um, 18 and to 21, there will be all microscopic. Okay, and it's already been integrated in the in the PowerPoints in the laboratory. What you need to master in the laboratory, okay, as a supplements in the theories in the lecture is that you need to master each of the the images or the uh, the pictures or what it looks like a uh, a Ascaris lumbricoides, a Trichuris trichura a uh, enterobius vermicularis because in the OSPE, we will just project the, the image or the picture. And you are to identify the scientific name, the common name, and the disease that, that caused by that uh, parasite or that uh, microorganism. Okay? So you need to master, I repeat, all the images what it looks like an ascaris or what looks like a, um, a uh, pedicula, pediculus humanus, a lice, yung kuto. Sa bagay, yung kuto or yung uh, uh, pediculus humanus, it's uh, kapitis, it's, uh, it's very uh, easier to uh, identify. But the rest, it, most especially those cysts and trophozoites, which is uh, actually para magkakamukha parang siyang egg or larvae lang. I think you will find difficulty in identifying. So that's why you need to master and know the difference that of each of the, the parasite or the microorganism or the pathogen causing the diseases. Okay? That would be part in the laboratory. Okay? For the lecture, these are the ones that we need to master. Okay. The mode of transmission later in the succeeding slides in each of the systems, there will be tables where you will be able to identify the mode of transmission, what is the patient care, and so on. Okay. So in that, you will need to master, which will be included in the quizzes, in the OSPE, in, the, in your uh, final, in the pre-final term exam. Okay. So these are the superficial mycosis. Okay. Next would be the cutaneous here and male mycosis. We have the tinea pedis. Okay. So and then we have the tinea capitis and the tinea corpori. So tinea capitis, this is the one that causes athlete foot. And then and then we have the tinea capitis, the one that infects our uh, scalp. Okay. And then the the tinea corporis is in the trunk or the uh, the body, okay. And then we have the tinea crucis in the in our groin, and then we have the tinea ungium, which infects our uh, uh, the toenail, okay. Next, we have the subcutaneous mycosis. So when you say subcutaneous, we are go deeper. Okay. If it's if uh, the superficial it's outside and the cutaneous it's just beneath. Okay.
okay, or uh, beyond the the superficial, the subcutaneous already infects the dermis. So if there will be blood vessels that's already been affected or infected. Okay, so we have the sporotrichosis, the chromomycosis, and the mycetoma. Okay, first we have the sporotrichosis. This is typically affects the skin of an of an extremity caused by sporotrix iskensky. Okay, so please take note of the 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 fungi or the 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 microorganism or the pathogen that usually causes this. And then we have the cro uh, chromo chromomycosis. It's a chronic spreading uh, infection of the skin and subcutaneous tissue, usually affecting a lower extremity caused by various species of molds. So when you say various species of mold, molds, it can be, okay, it can be, uh, affect, it can be caused by this, uh, the previous uh, mentioned, okay, fungi. Okay, and then we have the mycetoma. It's also a chronic granulomatous infections that usually involve the feet caused by various also molds. Okay, for the fung uh, fungal infection of the skin, we, we actually term this uh, the ter uh, dermatomitosis. Okay, also, as, uh, also known as tinea or ringworm infections and uh, der uh, dermatomitosis. Mycosis. Some cause only uh, limited irritation, scaling, and redness. Usually, uh, when you have rashes or uh, yung parang namamalat, okay? Other cause itching, swelling, blisters, and severe scaling, okay? So, the pathogen that causes dermatophytosis is a various uh, filamentous fungi or molds collectively referred to as, uh, referred to as the term dermatophytes. Okay. The reserva will be infected humans and animals, uh, animals, and of course soil. Okay, mode of transmission is direct or indirect contact with lesions. I will not elaborate more on this mode of transmission because we already uh, discussed this. Okay, direct. Okay, direct or indirect with lesion contact. When you say uh, um, uh, contact with contaminate. Uh, contaminated floors, okay, shower. Wait, I will not elaborate more on this, The what is the direct or indirect contact because you know already, okay. Direct contact is skin to skin or uh, mucus to mucus, okay. So or if it's indirect through a vector, vehicle, through food, okay. So it's contact with contaminated floors, shower stalls, locker room benches, barbers, clippers, combs, hair brushes, or clothing. Okay. For the, the laboratory diagnosis, it's usually through microscopic examination of potassium hydroxide preparations of skin scrapings of nail clippings. Okay. So they usually use chemical like uh, potassium hydroxide. Okay. To uh, use for uh, the microscopic examination of the skin uh, scraping. This is a confirmatory test okay? to, to, to know exactly or to confirm exactly what specific fungi that causes this, um, this uh, uh, dermatophytosis. Okay? And of course, uh, another is uh, through isolation on culture media. So in fungi, we usually use saborodge dextrose agar. We don't usually use nutrient, uh, the general uh, nutrient agar, but we have a specialized okay, or selective media used for fungi that is the saborodge dextrose agar. Actually, it's included in the, uh, if you review your uh, PowerPoint in the diversity of microorganism, especially in the fungi part, it is mentioned there, the media that's used to isolate, okay, to cultivate fungi, that is saborodge uh, dextrose agar. Okay? And then for the patient care is use standard precautions. You know already uh, what are the protocols, guidelines when you are to deal uh, with this kind of, um, of uh, infections. We usually use uh, our uh, our gloves, our complete PPE, okay, just to make sure that it cannot be transferred from one person to another, okay. 
For the fungal infection of that oral region, we have uh, the oral candidiasis. So it's already also been mentioned in the diversity, okay, the trash. Okay. It's a, uh, actually uh, called the oral candidiasis okay, uh, caused by uh, candida albicans. It's a yeast infection of the oral cavity, common in infants, elderly patients, and immunosuppressed individuals. Okay. It's uh, actually a white it's um, a white creamy patches occur on the tongue, mucous membranes, and the corners of the mouth. So usually, if babies cannot uh, be able to eat well or uh, uh, feed well with uh, their milk, usually the doctor will be able to use the tongue depressor okay, to, to check those uh, uh, the tongue itself and uh, if it's been infected, the mucous membrane and the corners of the tongue. Okay. Hindi naman ganito ka grabe. Okay. But of course, if there are, okay, usually use, uh, there will be ointment that's used to, uh, to um, parang oral uh, ointment. Okay. That uh, it's safe to, uh, to use uh, uh, by uh, babies or uh, uh, patients, okay, for the, for the treatment of the thrush or the oral candidiasis. Okay. So the pathogen, okay, so these are the ones that you need to review and master, okay. The pathogen that causes trash or the oral candidiasis, we have the candida albicans, okay. And then the reserva is, of course, the infected humans. Mode of transmission is contact with secretions or excretions of mouth skin, vagina, or feces. So remember, it's not only the mouth that can be uh, infected, but also the vagina, uh, the, um, the skin. Okay? Uh, it can also be transmitted through feces and uh, passage from mother to neonate during childbirth and endogenous uh, spread from one area of the body to another. Okay? So endogenous is within. Okay, it can be transferred from one area of the body to another. Okay, and then uh, for the laboratory diagnosis, it's through again microscopic examination. You will not find difficulty in actually uh, remembering uh, laboratory diagnosis, kasi medyo pare pareho sila. Uh, same through with the patients patient's care and the mode of transmission. Medyo may hirapan lang kayo to actually uh, master and uh, remember the pathogen and the reserva. Okay? For the laboratory uh, diagnosis, it's through microscopic examination and isolation on culture media. And then uh, patient care, use standard precautions for hospitalized patient. Okay? For the fungal infection of the central nervous system, we have the cryptococcosis uh, crypto or the cryptococcal uh, meningitis. Okay? It starts uh, as a lung infection, but it spreads via the bloodstream to the brain. Okay? So when you view it in the microscope, you can view it like this. So you, these are the ones that you need to also master uh, the images of uh, those um, those um, uh, minute microorganism that can only be seen through the microscope. Okay, so pag may nakita na kayo, we, if we, we will be projecting uh, later on like this, we just identify the uh, the the pathogen and the disease that they cause. Okay, and if it's a fungi, if it's a protozoans, it's a viral or bacterial. Okay. It's usually pres present presence as a uh, subacute or chronic meningitis, common infection in AIDS patient. Okay, so this is the infection for in the central nervous system. Okay, so the pathogen is a uh, Cryptococcus neoformans. Okay, the reserva would be pigeon's nest, pigeon uh, turkey, bat droppings, bat uh, droppings, uh, soil contaminated with uh, bird droppings okay mode of transmission is the inhalation of yeast okay inhalation of yeast through the cyst trophozoites okay so um, for the laboratory diagnosis it's direct observation in uh, uh, cerebrospinal fluid specimen so for the laboratory it's uh, it's not the same with the fungal infection of the 
the oral and the integumentary or the skin because this one is uh, the central nervous system. So this is the direct observation in the cerebrospinal fluid specimen with inja ink preparation. Okay, so this is a stain uh, used okay, in the laboratory for uh, a specialized specimen, inja ink. Okay, it's a blank ink actually. Parang ink ng ballpen natin. Okay? So, that's inja ink. Okay? And uh, another is true isolation of culture media. And then for the patient care, okay, against the same, use standard precautions for hospitalized patient. Okay? For the parasitic infection, okay, we will need to start with um, the defining what is parasitology. Okay, so parasitology is a branch of microbiology. It is actually a scientific study of parasite. So though parasitology is a branch of microbiology, not all parasite is a microbe. Okay, not all parasite are uh, minute or small in size. Okay, because other parasites like Ascaris lubricoides, we can see it in our naked eye. Yung mga bulati natin sa chan, like yung Enterobis vermicularis, pwede makita with our naked eye. But those protozoans, okay, of course, these are, um, are microbe, micro, uh, minute or small in size. Okay, so... Um, Parasitism is a symbiotic relationship that is of benefit to one party or symbion. Okay, so the parasite and usually detrimental to the other party. So we discussed this last time in microbial ecology. So parasites are organisms that live on or in other living organisms that whose expense they gain some advantage. Okay, so they, if they cannot be detrimental, if they cannot be deadly to the host, they can uh, actually deprive the host of the space and the nutrients. Okay, so they compete with the nutrients with the parasite. Okay, so we have two types or uh, uh, kinds of parasites. We have the ectoparasites that uh, live on the outside of the host. Okay, host body. What are examples of ectoparasites? We have the arthropods, like the my, uh, the mites, okay, the lice or the ticks. So later in the in the succeeding slides, okay, we, we in the laboratory and in the part of the lecture in the finals, you will be okay knowing a lot of the, the ectoparasites and endoparasites. Okay? Endoparasites, these are the parasites that live inside the host. Okay? So what are examples of the endoparasites? It uh, usually lives within us. These are the protozoans okay? or the helminths. Helminths like the, the Ascaris, the Trichuris trichura. Okay? So you will be uh, learning a lot in the laboratory on this uh, endoparasites and ectoparasites okay all the part will be also included in the in the lecture okay so in the life cycle of a parasite may involve one or more host okay so if more than one host is involved we have the definite host it is the host that harbors the adult or sexual stage of the parasite like the humans, okay, they are, we are considered the, the a definite host, okay. The host that harbors the larva or a sexual stage, we call it the intermediate host, okay. And then uh, we have the, uh, the accidental host, which one that can serve as a host, but it's not uh, the usual host in the parasite's life cycle. So, you know the difference between the definite host and the intermediate host, is that the intermediate host, it's in the larval, only the larval or the asexual stage, okay? The accidental host, it's that they are not the usual host in the parasite's life cycle, okay? So later in the in the lab, you will, uh, they will, uh, we will be providing you the life cycle of each of the parasites, okay? Or the 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 diseases that they cause, 
Okay. And then we have the dead end host is one in which the parasite cannot continue its life cycle. So the dead end host can be a horse or that can can be a human that cannot be transferred the 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 parasite or the infection to a mosquito, okay, or to other to other uh, animals. That's the dead end host, okay. A facultative parasite is an organism that can be parasitic but does not have to live as a parasite. It is a capable of independent life. Example of this is the free-living amoeba, the Negleria fulleri, that causes primary primary uh, amoebic uh, meningo uh, encephalitis, uh, meningo encephalitis. Okay, this is the one that I mentioned last time. Okay, that causes. Uh, I, um, the one that I uh, I did give you, uh, shared you a story with a 20 year old uh, female, okay, who just swam on the swamp, okay, and then after a few days, uh, parang na nakoma siya because the this one actually infects our brain, okay, and the meninges of the brain, okay, so that's Nigleria fulleri. An obligate parasite have no choice. It must inhabit a host or host. So most parasites that uh, infect humans are obligate parasites, okay, like the protozoans. Okay? So how parasite cause disease? The manner in which parasites cause damage to their host varies from one species of parasites to another and often depends on the number of parasites that are present. Okay, So that's why... Um, another program from the government is uh, uh, the, the uh, what do you call this? The, 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 the warming. They call it, they term it the warming. Okay. So that every after six months, you can actually uh, take the anti helminthic drug for you to, to, uh, um, uh, what do you call this? To to cleanse your uh, your um, your um, your system with the parasites. Okay. Some parasites produce toxins. Some produce harmful enzymes. So some invasive and migratory parasites cause physical damage to tissues and organs. Okay. Some cause the destruction of individual cells and some cause occlusion of blood vessel blockage. Okay. And other tubular structures. So sometimes the host immune response to the parasite causes more injury than do the parasites themselves. So if you can, uh, if you if you uh you can just imagine if the you can comp if the parasite compete with your um with your um uh, nutrients and the space in your uh, in your system okay that's why one of the one of the symptoms or the physical uh um uh, observance of a patient or an individual that a parasites actually invade his or her system is that a uh, young uh, a malnourished uh, uh, children or individual kasi yung pumapayat lumalaki ang chan okay so these are the 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 signs okay for the parasitic protozoa most protozoa are unicellular they are single cell okay they are classified taxonom taxonomically by their mode of locomotion so Amoebae move by means of pseudopodia. They have the false feet. Okay, we we actually discuss this in the diversity again of microorganism in the protozoans. Okay, flagellates move by means of flagella. Ciliates move by means of cilia, and sporozoans do not move. Okay, so not all protozoa are parasitic like the Paramecium species. Okay. So, protozoal infections are most often diagnosed by microscopic examination of bodily fluids, okay. if you have diarrhea, tissue specimens, of, or feces. Okay. Specimens are examined for motile tropozoites and dormant cyst stage. Okay. 
for the protozoal infections of humans, okay, we have the lesmaniasis, okay, so this is not actually common, okay, this is caused by various species of flagellated protozoa in the, in the genus uh, lesmania, okay, usually transmitted via the bite of an infected sand fly, okay, three forms of the disease is cutaneous, mucocutaneous, okay, when you say mucocutaneous, okay, it uh, also uh, had infected the mucous membranes and, of course, the visceral or the internal organs, okay. Cutaneous and uh, mucocutaneous leishmaniasis can cause severe tissue damage and disfigurement, okay. Visceral, visceral uh, leishmaniasis can lead to death because this is a... Uh, actually a, um, a systemic already can cause your visceral organs. So this is an image of patient with cutaneous leishmaniasis. Okay. So it's, um, it uh, had an infection with the superficial and the, the cutaneous. Okay. For the protozoal infection of the eyes, we have the amoebic conjunctivitis and uh, the keta conjunctivitis, okay, caused by uh, several species of amoebas in the genus Acanthamoeba, okay, so they are the facultative parasites. They can lead to loss of vision or enucleation, okay. When you say enucleation, enucleation, okay, this is a, uh, a procedure or surgery that usually remove part of the eye, okay, or, uh, or the structures or the lobe of the eye or the lobe of the eye. Okay. And then we have the toxoplasmosis caused by toxoplasmogondi and intracellular sporozoans can involve the central nervous system, lungs, muscles, or heart as well as the eyes. Okay. Acquired by ingesting cyst or oocyst. Next, we have the protozoal infection of the central nervous system. We have the primary amoebic meningoencephalitis caused by uh, Nigleria fulleri, okay, an amoeba, uh, amoeba flagellate. And then we also have Acanthamoeba and uh, Balamutia species can cause similar conditions, okay. Persons often become infected by swimming or diving in amoeba-contaminated water or uh, the old swimming pool, they call it, or they term it the old swimming pool. Okay. After the amoebas uh, colonize nasal tissues, they invade the brain and meninges by traveling along the olfactory nerves. This is often fatal or detrimental or deadly. Uh, okay. I think this is the last slide for the parasitic infection of integumentary uh, sense organs and the central nervous system. Okay. So, any question, class, regarding the fungal and um, parasitic infection of the skin, sense organ, and the central nervous system before we proceed with the gastrointestinal? Okay. Or we, we just uh, have the gastrointestinal first. May I just download the attendance? And then I will just ask if you have questions later, okay, so that we can finish the... Uh, the gastrointestinal, okay? So may I just project or present to the class the PowerPoint for the, the fungal, viral, bacterial, and uh, parasitic infection of the gastrointestinal tract. So if you notice, the PowerPoint is comprehensive, nandun lahat. Okay, so you just have to review all of this in the upcoming quizzes, exams, and of course, OSPE. Can you now view my uh, slide class? Yes, ma'am. I will just um, make it big. Okay, so we are now on the viral infection of the gastrointestinal tract. Okay, so for the, vi uh, for the viral infection of the gastrointestinal tract, you know already how virus infect or causes diseases. Okay, so we have uh, discussed this last time. So we have the viral uh, gastroenteritis 
also called viral enteritis and uh, viral diarrhea. So this is usually uh, termed it as uh, stomach flu. Okay, this is not caused actually by influenza, but they usually term it as stomach flu or 24-hour flu. Okay, symptoms include nausea, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, myalgia. When you say myalgia, uh, yeah, this is a, a pain in the muscles or a headache. Okay, we have the you have the headache, malaise, okay, and low grade fever. Okay, most often a self limiting disease lasting 24 to 48 hours. Okay, so the pathogen would be enteric adenovirus or the astrovirus or the Kali C virus or the rotavirus. So the pathogen can be uh, the virus uh, uh, viral or the um, uh, viruses. Okay, so we have the enteric adenovirus, astrovirus, Kali C uh, virus, and rotavirus. Okay, reserva would be infected person, contaminated water, and shellfish. Mode of transmission transmission would be fecal, oral route. Okay, and then for the laboratory um, diagnosis. We usually use, uh, use or needs the electron microscopic examination of stool specimen because this is a viral. Okay, it's very difficult to uh, to actually uh, have an accurate um, result of uh, this because it's a virus. It needs to have a host cell to host cell to to get a specimen from the host. Okay, or from uh, uh, from the animals. Okay, and then we have the immunodiagnostic or molecular procedures. So when you say immunodiagnostic, you can have a blood test or a uh, fecal test or a urine or molecular uh, procedures. Okay, patient care use the standard precautions for hospitalized patient. and then add contact precautions for diapered or incontinent patient because. If you notice, the mode of transmission is a fecal to oral route. Okay. And then we have the most common types of viral hepatitis. Okay. So we have the type A hepatitis or the have infection or the infectious hepatitis. We call it the infectious hepatitis or the epidemic hepatitis. Okay. Caused by hepatitis A virus. Okay. So for the transmission would be uh, fecal oral uh, transmission. And then we have type B hepatitis or the HBV infection, uh, or we could term it the serum hepatitis caused by hepatitis B virus. Okay? It will be uh, transmitted through sexual or household contact with an infected person or injected drug use, tattooing, or uh, needle stick. Okay? And then we have type C hepatitis or the HCV uh, uh, infection or we term it the non-A, non-B hepatitis caused by hepatitis C virus, okay? primarily parenterally transmitted through mother to uh, fetus okay? and uh, it is really sexual. Okay? Type D hepatitis or the HDV infection, okay? or we term it the delta hepatitis um, caused by hepatitis D virus or the HDV delta virus, okay? Co-infection co with uh, hepatitis B, uh, B virus is necessary. Exposure to infected, uh, infected blood and body fluids, okay? So these are the most common types of viral hepatitis. And then we have the type E hepatitis or the caused by uh, hepatitis E virus, also through fecal uh, oral transmission, primarily fecally contaminated drinking water. It can also be transmitted through person to person. And then we have the type G, which is, this one is actually not uh, very common. The common is hepatitis A and hepatitis B, okay? The hepatitis G uh, is actually caused by hepatitis G virus or the HGV. This is uh, also true parenteral transmission. Okay. 
For the bacterial infection of the gastrointestinal tract, we have the bacterial gastritis and ulcers. Okay? So the Helicobacter pylori is the only okay, uh, bacteria usually uh, can uh, live with the acidic environment or acidic stomach. It's actually a curb, microaerophilic, capnophilic, gram bacillus. Okay? Transmission occurs via, in, uh, via infected humans, uh, probably by ingestion, presumed to be either oral to oral or fecal to oral. So, you know, if you have um, ulcers or gastritis, you have uh, uh, complications like um, bleeding, internal bleeding, or uh, obstruction or perforation, yung parang uh, there will be holes in your stomach already, okay? Perforations, penetrations, bleeding, okay? And then we have the Campylobacter enteritis uh, caused by Campylobacter je uh, jejuni, less common, uh, the, uh, the um, Campylobacter coli. It's a curve, S-shape or spiral, gram bacillus. Transmission occurs via animals, including poultry, uh, uh, cattle, sheep, swine, rodents, birds, kittens, puppies, and other pets. So that's Campylo uh, bacter enteritis. Okay? Enteritis. Okay? And then we have the cholera, certain uh, biotypes of Vibro cholerae, uh, sero group 1, they are curved. Uh, gram bacillus that secretes enterotoxin. Okay. Transmission occurs via infected humans in aquatic reserva and through fecal or oral route. So if you notice the uh, bacterial and viral infection is usually through transmitted through fecal and oral. Okay. And then we have the salmonellosis, members of the family Enterobacteriaceae, sa gram uh, bacilli uh, that invade intestinal uh, cells. Okay? Release endotoxin and produce cytotoxins and enterotoxin. We, uh, we, we mentioned that uh, last time, how do bacteria cause diseases? Because they produce the, uh, the, the endotoxin. Okay? And transmission uh, occurs through domestic and wild animals, contaminated food, fecal uh, oral, food handlers, and contaminated water. Okay, this is the one that we uh, uh, we we perform in the in the microbiological examination of food and water in the lab in the midterms. Okay. Typhoid fever on the enteric fever, usually caused by Salmonella typhi, a gram, uh, gram negative bacillus that uh, releases endotoxin and produces exotoxins. Okay? Transmission occurs via infected humans by uh, typhoid and uh, paratyphoid. Some people became, uh, become uh, carriers after the infection. Example is the uh, typhoid Mary. Okay? You know Mary Malone? Uh, actually, there is a story behind this. Okay? It's, uh, Mary Malon is actually a chef in a restaurant. Okay? In, um, in, um, in, in a, I think in, somewhere in Paris. Okay? Ma, uh, Mary Malon is a chef that usually don't um, follow protocols or guidelines. So after uh, disposing, after going to the bathroom, she don't actually... Um, wash your hand so he 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 transferred or transited the, the salmonella typhi in the food okay and causes typhoid fever okay so that's the story behind my uh, um, uh, the typhoid mary okay and then we have the shigella uh, shigellosis that causes basil uh, basiliary dysentery okay shigel uh, shigella dysentery these are the numerous uh, uh, bacteria that causes basil uh, basiliary dysentery. Okay?
Okay. We have also Shigella Flexneri, Shigella Boydi, and uh, Shinela Soinei. And uh, these are the non-motile gram-negative bacilli members of the family and aerobacteria chain. Okay. Transmitted be occurs via infected humans. Next, we have the enterovirulent and Escherichia coli. Okay. Um, we usually term it the uh, entero uh, hemorrhagic Escherichia coli, okay, diarrhea or the EHEC or the EHEC, okay, or uh, we they usually um, uh, term or or name it the Escherichia coli um, um, uh, 0157 or H7, okay, O. Or O157 or H7 is most commonly involved. Okay, others include uh, other species uh, O26H11, and we have the O111 and H8, and uh, we have the O104H21. It, they are the gram-negative bacillus that produces uh, potent cytotoxin. Okay? Transmissions occur via cattle, uh, cattle feces, also infected humans, through uh, also fecal oral route. Okay? And then we have the enterotoxigenic uh, Escherichia coli that also uh, causes uh, travelers' diarrhea. Many different serotypes of this, okay? Uh, entero uh, toxigenic Escherichia coli be transmitted via infected humans, also through fecal oral route. Okay. For the bacterial infection of um, uh, additional uh, infection of the the gastro, okay, we have the gastritis, gastric, and duodenal ulcer. Okay. It is suspected when a person has upper abdominal pain with nausea or heart heartburn. Okay. Gastric ulcers have symptoms like pain, blotting, nausea, vomiting after eating. Okay. And then we have the duodenal uh, ulcers. We have the gnawing, um, the burning, itching, uh, aching, mild to moderate pain just below the breastbone. Okay. The pathogen will be the Helicobacter pylori. Reserva would be infected humans. Mode of transmission will be ingestion. Okay, presumed to be either oral to oral or fecal to oral transmission. Laboratory diagnosis would be staining or culturing of the gastric and duodenal biopsy specimen. So this is the one that if they will get sample from the infected organs, okay, they term it the biopsy. They get something from you and the infected, um, the tissue or the organs, okay? And they will analyze and be tested in the laboratory, okay? Immunodiagnostic and molecular diagnostic procedure also performed in this uh, kind of infection or disease. And for the patient care, usually use standard precaution for hospitalized patient, okay? So this is just the representation of the one mentioned. So if you have cholera, this is the acute bacterial diarrheal disease with profuse watery stools, okay? Occasionally, uh, occasionally vomiting and rapid dehydration, okay? So it is caused by, uh, this is the summarized uh, from the ones mentioned a while ago. Pathogen would be vidro cholerae. Reserva would be infected humans and aquatic uh, reservoir. Okay. What of transmission would be fecal oral route, contact with feces or vomitus, ingestion of fecally contaminated food and water. It is uh, also mechanically transmitted by flies through uh, flies. So these are, they are the vector or uh, vector would be the flies. Okay. Laboratory diagnosis would be isolation on culture media. Patient care would be use standard precautions for hospitalized patients. Okay, add, add contact precautions for diapered or incontinent patients. Okay, and then we have the typhoid fever or the enteric fever. Okay, this is the in, uh, systemic uh, bacterial disease with fever. Okay, so if you have uh, typhoid fever, you will be having rashes like this. Okay. You will be experiencing severe headache, malice, anorexia, rash, non-productive cough, and constipation. Okay.
So the pathogen will be Salmonella typhi. In, uh, reserva would be infected humans. Mode of transmission would be fecal route, uh, fecal route, fecal oral, oral route, and then through uh, vehicle. Uh, transmission, food or water contaminated by feces or urine, and through vector transmission or mechanical transmission by flies. Okay. Laboratory diagnosis would be isolation of microorganism from blood, urine, feces, or bone marrow. Okay. And then we, they usually perform also immunodiagnostic procedure okay. or um, blood, blood test. Okay. Patient care would be use standard precaution for its hospitalized patient, add contact precaution for diapers or, or diapered or incontinent patient. Okay. Next would be shigellosis or bacillary dysentery, an acute bacterial uh, infection of the lining of the small and large intestine producing diarrhea with blood, mucus, or pus or pus. So they usually get a sample from the uh, fecal uh, specimen, okay, to confirm the the disease or the infection. The pathogen will be Shigella, uh, Shigella dysenterae, Shigella flexneri, Shigella boidi, and uh, Shigella nos, uh, nos, no, uh, sonei. Okay, reserva would be infected humans. Mode of transmission is through direct or indirect fecal oral transmission. Fecally contaminated hands and uh, fingernails, fecally contaminated food, water, milk, and then uh, through vector, uh, through flies. Okay, and then laboratory diagnosis would be isolation on culture media, and then patient care would be the same. Okay, so this PowerPoint I should. Uh, I, I repeat, is already comprehensive. Nandito na po lahat ng information. We just have to review it and then uh, read, read, read. Okay? And then we have the Clostridium difficile, uh, difficile or uh, difficile associated diseases, major cause of condition known as the antibiotic associated diarrhea. Okay? Uh, the uh, the antibiotics that usually usually causes this one is cephalosporin, ma garon, ma uh, the the amoxicillin. Okay, so these are the antibiotics that causes usually this uh, antibiotic associated diarrhea. Pathogen would be Crostridium difficile. Reserva would be humans, member of the indigenous microbiota. Mode of transmission is uh, none because it can be uh, caused by the antibiotics that are uh, being ingested. Okay. Laboratory diagnosis would be commercial uh, enzyme immuno, immunoassay. Okay. Patient care would be use contact precaution for the duration of the illness. Okay. And then uh, for the protozoal infection of the gastrointestinal tract, we have a summarized um, table here. Okay, for we have the amoebiasis, the etiologic agent gen or the pathogen will be Entamoeba histolytica. You will be um, uh, viewing this all of this in the laboratory. Mode of transmission would be humans, fecally contaminated food or water. And then we have the balentidiasis. So if the disease is not, um, it's easier to, um, to uh, not actually to memorize, and but to actually um, remember because usually uh, it, it, um, it named after the, uh, the etiologic agent or the pathogen, okay? So like the amoebiasis, the abalantidiasis, uh, caused by the palantidium coli, that's the etiologic agent, usually transmitted through pigs, food or water contaminated with pig feces. And then we have the cryptosporidiosis, uh, okay, um, caused by the cryptosporidium uh, 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 parvum, Okay. Transmitted through infected humans, cattle, um, uh, other domesticated animals. And then we have the cyclosporiasis, usually caused by uh, the uh, cyclospora, uh, cayetanensis, okay. usually transmitted through feces, water, and uh, it can be uh, produced through uh, the feces and uh, water. 
Okay. And then uh, Jarjasis caused by uh, Jarjalambia, usually transmitted by humans and infected animals. This is the sexually transmitted diseases. Okay. So this is the summarized uh, protozoal infection of the gastrointestinal tract. Okay. So this is the um, the the cyst that usually uh, caused by cause that uh, causes infection of the gastrointestinal tract. Okay. So this the entamoeba in cystolytica usually infects colon with the secondary infection of the liver. Okay. So it, it has actually complications. So if you notice, cis and oocis is very difficult to to uh, to to remember because others have para magkakamuka sila later in the in the in the other um, discussion in the other systems. They usually are uh, they look they looks the same. Okay, so cis is like an egg. Okay. When you view it in the microscope, nakapakahirap nilang uh, i-view in the microscope. So, this is an example of the cyst and the troposoids and the oocyst. Okay. So, infected patient pass in non-infectious troposoids as well as infectious cysts in stools. And diagnosis by presence of characteristic cysts containing one to four nuclei in stools. So, when you get sample, they will be able, if they will be able to see cysts, uh, trophocytes and oocysts in the microscope, they will confirm the pathogen or the the, um, the protozoans. Okay, therapy would be or the medication would be iodokinol and metronidazole. Okay, and then we have the um, cryptosporidium parvum. Okay, infects lower small intestine organisms are intracellular parasites in epithelial cells of intestinal villi. Okay, diagnosis by modified acid fast stool, uh, stool sample. Okay, so if you say acid fast, we usually perform the ones that we uh, perform in the sputum. Okay, so the same procedure. Therapy would be paro, uh, paromom, uh, paromomycin, often not uh, usually effective. So they are searching more on uh, the, the therapy or the drug that can treat, treat this, uh, this, uh, this infection. And then we have the Jarjalambia. Infection usually results from drink, drinking uh, contaminated water. Infects duodenum with incubation uh, time of about 10 days. Acute infection shows sudden onset with the uh, foul smelling, watery diarrhea, diagnosis by presence of cyst or trophocyte in stools. Okay? Therapy would be metronidazole. Okay? So if you view it in the microscope, they look like a face, like para meron silang mata. Okay? So you can view this in the, if you have the face-to-face, -face, you are the ones viewing this in the microscope. Okay, so we will have uh, this in the laboratory. So the trophocytes usually uh, 10 to 20 micrometer long and by uh, 5 to 15 micrometer uh, wide. Okay, the um, trophocytes resembles a fist, so they have two nuclei look like eyes. It has been described as resembling an owl face, okay, clown face or an old man with glasses. Okay. So, napakadali nitong uh, ID to identify in the, in, the, in the microscope or later in the exams. Okay. That's the Georgia Lambia. And then we have the helminths. So, the helminths can be the parasitic worm like the Ascaris lubicoides, the Trichuris trichura, which will be later be viewed in the uh, laboratory part. Okay. So the word helminth means parasitic worm. They are multicellular. Okay. Eukaryotic organism. It has two major uh, divisions. They usually term it the round worms or the nematodes or the trichuris, uh, the ascaris lumbricoides. Okay. And then we have the flat worms or the platyhelminthes. The flat forms are further divided into tapeworms, the cestodes, and the flux or the trematodes. Okay. So the helmic life cycle has three, uh, 
three stages. We have the egg larva and the adult worm. Okay, it can it will be uh, provided in the uh, presentation in the laboratory. Helminth infection I primarily acquired by ingesting the larvae stage in some uh, helminth diseases. Larvae enter by penetration of the skin. If you have cuts, abrasions, it can be uh, uh, the uh, uh, entry of the of the helminths. Okay, so these are the summarized okay, helminth infections of humans. Okay, by the liquidation, helminth disease, and the cause. So in this skin, we have the onchocerciasis, uh, or caused by the onchocerca volvulus. Okay, and then we have the muscle or subcutaneous tissue. We have the trichinosis or the drac uh, dracunculiasis. Okay, caused by trachinella spiralis for uh, spiralis for the trichinosis, and then uh, dracunculus uh, medinensis for the uh, dracunculiasis. Okay, for the eyes we have the onchocerciasis. Uh, caused by uh, the onchocerciasis uh, volvulus, okay? And then we have the loalcis or the loa loa. And then we have the respiratory system. We have the paragonimiasis or the paragonimus westermani. So you will be viewing all of this in the laboratory. And then we have for the circulatory system, we have the filariasis or the uh, cystosomiasis. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, pronounce. Okay? Caused by the Bulgaria barnkofti, we have the Bruegia malayi and the cystosoma species. Okay? Some or most of those uh, here in the tabulated or in the tables will be available in the lamb, but some we don't have. Okay? And then we have the central nervous system. Um, the disease will be cyst, uh, cysticercosis, okay? and we have the high tadid cyst disease caused by the following tenia solium, okay? and the echinococcus uh, granulosis or the echinococcus multilocularis. Multilocularis. Okay? So these are the helmet infection of humans. Okay? For the helminth infection of the gastrointestinal tract, we have the ascariasis. Okay, so the ascariasis is the disease okay, caused by um, the ascaris uh, lumbricoides. So the the common name or the scientific name would be the ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, they are the nematodes. Okay, uh, the common name would they are the roundworm. Okay, hookworm, please take note of the, the common names, scientific name, and the diseases. Later in the laboratory, it will be provided with your laboratory instructors. Kasi yun yung, this will be the ones that you will be providing in the OSPE. Okay, hookworm infection, we have the cyclotostoma duodenale, duodenale or the necator americanus. Okay, so they are, uh, the common name would be the human hookworm okay they are also nematode okay um they can co cause uh, cyclostomiasis or necatoriasis okay and then we have the pinworm pinworm would be the common name for the uh enterobius vermicularis they are also nematode okay so they usually called ent uh, enterobiasis Okay. The disease would be enterobiasis. The common name would be pinworm, human pinworm, and the scientific name would be enterobius uh, vermicularis. Okay. So you will be um, viewing the image or the picture of all of this in the laboratory. Okay. And then we have the whipworm. Okay. Whipworm is the common name for the trichuris trichura cause that uh, causes trichuriasis. So, hindi naman masyado. It's not difficult to uh, remember the disease because it's usually named after the, the, the name of the, the pathogen or the helminth. 
okay? They are also nematode, okay? The common name would be human whipworm. And then we have the strong, uh, strong geloidiasis caused uh, by the strong geloides, uh, stercoralis, uh, okay? They are also nematode, okay? And then we have the beef tapeworm caused by tenia saginata, okay? They are cestoed. And then we have the dog, dog tapeworm caused by dipelidium uh, caninum, also a cestoed. And then we have the dwarf uh, tapeworm caused by hemenolo, uh, hemenolo, hemenolepis hemeno, lep, anana. They are also cestoed. Okay. And then we have the fish tapeworm. Okay. So those tapeworm, okay. Fish, dogs, okay. The uh, the the uh, cow or the humans, okay. And then uh, we have also the 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 scientific name for the fish tapeworm will be uh, Diphylobotrium latum, acestone, and the pork tapeworm that. Uh, caused by uh, tinea solium, a cestone, and also the rat tapeworm, Haemanolepis uh, uh, diminuta, a cestone, and then we have the, the um, uh, fasciolo, fasciolopsiasis, or the fasciolopsis buski, okay, or uh, the tapeworm, or the, um, uh, the caused by fasciola hepatica. And then we have the clonorchiasis caused by clonorchis synestis. Others will uh, not be available in the lab, but most will be available in the lab. Okay. So we have medically important arthropods. Okay. So we have three classes of arthropods studied in um, parasitology courses. We have, of course, insects, lice, like the lice, flies, or the mosquitoes. Okay. Lice, like the Peticulus humanus. Okay or the, the mosquitoes anopheles, okay, or the, the uh, what we call this, the culex, okay, arachnids like the mite sticks, okay, and then we have the crustaceans like crabs, crayfish, and certain cyclops species, okay. So arthropods serve as mechanical or biologic vectors in the transmission of certain infectious diseases. So they are considered ectoparasites. They can uh, be, can reside or invade our, our, uh, the, our uh, uh, external, okay. Mechanical vectors uh, pick up a parasite at point A and drop it off at point uh, B. So they usually uh, can move okay, from one po uh, point to another or one point or one area to another. Biological vectors harbors the parasite in their body where the parasite matures in or multiplies. Okay, So these are the medically important arthropods. So it will be supplemented in the laboratory because you can see uh, samples Okay, like uh, yung kuto, ticks, mites in the laboratory part. So we already view it in the microscope. We got a, an image and then we integrated in the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So these are the ways in which arthropods may be involved in human diseases. So type of involvement would be the arthropod may actually be the cause of the disease. Example would be scabies. So this is a disease in which microscopic mites live in subcutaneous tunnels and cause it intense itching. Yung sinasabi nilang ali sa iba na ginegek. Okay? So we usually term it scabies. Okay? The arthropod may serve as the intermediate host in the life cycle of the parasite. So, example would be flea in the life cycle of the dog tapeworm, beetle in the life cycle of the rat tapeworm. So, they are considered intermediate host. The next would be arthropod may serve as the indefinite host in the life cycle of a parasite. So, example would be the uh, female Anopheles mosquito in the life cycle of the malaria parasites that causes 
uh, plasmodium uh, ma uh, uh, malariae, okay? And then we have um, uh, plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium ovale, plasmodium vivax, okay? We also have that in the laboratory, yung preserved specimen, okay? Or uh, uh, prepared slime. And then the arthropod may serve as a vector in the transmission of an infectious diseases. So, example would be oriental rat flea in the transmission of the plaque. Okay, Tick, you know plaque. Okay, the the biofilm that causes one or two uh, uh, microorganism. Okay, tick and also tick in the transmission of the Rocky Mountain spotted fever and the Lyme disease. Okay. So this is an example of a uh, dermacentor under Sony. This is a wood tick, one of the tick vectors of the Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Okay, and then we have the Synopsilia keopsis, uh, keopis, or this is an Oriental rat flea vector of the plaque and endemic typhus. Okay, and then we have the Pediculus humanus. Ito yung kuto. Uh, we usually term it the pediculus humanus uh, uh, chapitis kung sa, uh, sa, sa scalp or sa hair. This is actually a human body loss, a vector of the epidemic typhus. Okay? Pediculus humanus corporis ang tawag dun pag body loss. Okay? Okay? And then we have um, tyrus pubis. Yung kuto naman sa, if it's a louse in the pubic part, okay? Tyrus pubic, the pubic or the crab louse, okay? So, if you are not uh, used to taking a bath or usually those, uh, yung sinastawag nilang uh, mga taong grasa, they usually have this because they usually don't uh, regularly take a bath, okay? So, these are the medically important arthropods, okay? So that's it from for the gastrointestinal tract, for the viral, bacterial, and uh, the parasitic infection. Okay. So any question, uh, class, regarding the presentation for uh, for tonight? Any question? So the PowerPoint, like what I've said, are comprehensive. Nandun na lahat. So what you need to do is just to review and study. Most especially those pathogens that cause diseases. So I am giving you a clue. You just have to make sure that you um, remember everything. Those pathogens, okay. Most especially those are those uh, that are available in the laboratory in the in your laboratory part as a supplements of this uh, lecture discussion, okay. So you will need to master okay, their image kung um, ano ang itsura nila when you view it in the microscope or if we will have an image that's already been integrated in the PowerPoints in the laboratory part. Also included the ones that's being uh, uh, presented in the laboratory or in the lecture, I should say, the ones that we, we presented a while ago. Okay, so any question class? It's already 7.40. May I just download again the attendance? Any question? I will be uploading this one for, your, uh, for you to review in advance. Okay, I will uh, update you tomorrow. If I will be giving you a quiz before we will start with the guard, uh, cardiovascular uh, system and respiratory system on Thursday. Okay. Any question? I will be uploading in your in your own teams. Okay. Yes, anak, Mr. Kabawatan. Uh, ma uh, ma ko ba ko? Yes, yes, anak. Uh, about uh, about po sa lab material sa pinapadala mo. Yes. Ano po yung alternative yes. dun sa glass slide? Like what I've said a while ago, your alternative for your glass slide, if you cannot uh, go out, though you can actually go out, okay, because you are uh, some of you are vaccinated already. Though the actually yung glass slide is piso lang naman yata dos pagka nagpabili kayo. But if you cannot uh, get your own glass slide, you can have it 
um, a um, a plastic transparent plastic na medyo ano siya medyo makapal and you just cut just like the size of the glass slide we will have an alternative because you are not to actually view it in the microscope kasi wala naman kayong microscope what uh, you will be doing is uh, the procedure that we will be uh, 